Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to do the unboxing and overview of the Unihertz Titan Pocket. So this is a very interesting smartphone uh, that was launched on Kickstarter earlier this year and I backed it and now it's just starting to be received by Kickstarter backers such as myself. So this is made by a Chinese company called Unihertz and they've made quite a few interesting products before. Uh, they've always had their products on Kickstarter and this is the third product I backed from them. Their first product uh, I got from them was the Jelly Pro. That was back in uh, 2017, I believe. And then the Jelly 2, which just came out last year. And this is the third product I got from them. Uh, so this is the smaller edition of the Titan, which is uh, another product that they released. And uh, that product is, um, is a smartphone with a physical keyboard. Looked very similar to a BlackBerry Passport. And this is kind of like the, I would say, the BlackBerry Classic version, if that makes sense. Uh, as you remember, Blackberries are famous for their physical keyboards but unfortunately BlackBerry doesn't make mobile phones anymore. Their last phone that was actually branded BlackBerry um, even though it was made by TCL was uh, released in 2018 that was a BlackBerry Key 2 and that is the last BlackBerry branded mobile phone uh, and you know that makes sense because people don't use Blackberries anymore but there's still a small niche of people I would say a small group of people that still prefer to have physical keyboards um, so that's what Unihertz is targeting. Uh, I mean, they've always done this, right? The Jelly and the Jelly 2 and the Atom. Those phones were all geared towards people who like small phones, right? Which was kind of like a dying, uh, a niche, right, of, of mobile phones. And now they're targeting physical keyboard phones, which are also a dying niche of mobile phones. So they focus on a very small niche segment. Um, so yeah, that's why I got it, because, you know, I'm a, a gadget collector. I like to collect different kinds of mobile phones. Uh, and I do have Blackberries as well. And of course, I'm always interested to see uh, the next QWERTY keyboard phone, have the Cosmo Communicator, the FX Tech Pro, right? All these new like physical key physical keyboard phones are pretty cool. And um, yeah, I'm always interested to see what's up next. So anyways, this is Titan Pocket. All right, so on the back are the specs. So it runs an octa-core 2 gigahertz MediaTek Helio P70 CPU, which is a budget CPU, and that makes sense because this is a budget phone. It's priced at 300 bucks on Kickstarter, which is a budget price for a smartphone. Uh, still has to run the latest operating system, so it has Android 11, right? Even if it's budget, still got the latest OS. And then it's got six gigs of RAM, uh, 128 gigs of storage, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, uh, which is pretty good actually. Display size is 3.1 inches, right? It's still a small phone, but it's trying to be like the old BlackBerry classics, right? If the black, if the original Titan was trying to be like a BlackBerry Passport, this one is trying to be like a, the Titan Pocket is trying to be like a BlackBerry Classic. So more of a, um, you know, the familiar BlackBerry size, which means smaller. And then the camera is a 16 megapixel, uh, camera on the back and 8 megapixel on the front, which I'm not expecting too much of the cameras because it's a small phone maker So I'm not expecting the camera to be any good um, Because that's just how it is, right? There's a reason why the best camera phones are all from the big companies is because uh, You basically have to have decades and decades of expertise in your company like years and years of knowing how to build the right software and the right hardware in order to build a really good camera phone so, um, yeah, like cameras are just really hard to build. So that's why uh, most of these, like I would call smaller startup companies like Unihertz and Planet Computers and FX Tech, all these smaller companies are not going to have good cameras. They just can't, right? You need to have years and years of experience and bring on the most experienced um, engineers in order to make a really good camera. That's why all the, yeah, all the good camera phones are from like Samsung, Google, Apple, etc. Yeah, you just, it's really hard for small companies to make a good camera system, no matter what the um, the raw specs are like. Anyways, get that over with, temper our expectations. This is a $300 phone after all, so I'm not even going to bother with that camera, really. Uh, this is meant to be a secondary phone, I think, for a lot of people. So anyways, in the box, you get the um, quick start guide, I'm guessing. Double check, I don't expect to have too much information here. Yeah, here's the SIM removal tool. And you get this a screen protector. Comes with a screen protector, I guess. Yep. And then you get the user guide right here. So your basic stuff. It's cool that even for these uh, small startup companies, the packaging is still pretty nice. It's still what these days. Like I think most. Uh, electronics makers, even from China, right, they really know how to package their stuff. Right? I think it's all from Apple, right? They took their influence from Apple. Right, this is the phone itself. 
I'm gonna put it aside for now. And here um, is the chargers. So you got a USB-C cable right here. Of course, everything uses USB-C these days. Totally expected. Uh, and then you have the wall plug right here, which actually isn't a given. Like when I unbox a thousand dollar phones, like the iPhone 12 and the Samsung Galaxy like Z Flip, which I unboxed a few days ago, those actually don't come with these. They don't come with these wall plugs anymore. So Unihertz, even though they're a small company, is a $300 phone, they give you more in the box than a thousand dollar phones like the Samsung and Apple do. Isn't that kind of interesting? Anyways, um, just because the big companies, yeah, they, they say it's for the environment, you know, but really, you, we all know they're trying to like save costs and stuff like that. Even the wall plug is, is saving them something, I'm sure. All right, and uh, I mean, that, that's probably why they got rid of the headphone jack too, right? Headphone jack costs a little bit extra money, I'm sure, to put on every phone. So it, it, anything, because they're moving millions and millions of units, it saves them a lot of money in the long run. All right, so uh, this is the Unihertz Titan Pocket. Um, which actually, you know what, at first glance it reminds me of my old Kyocera Duraforce. <laughs> Especially with this little red button here, that's a really, that's a, like a throwback, man. Yeah, it does remind me of my Kyocera Duraforce back in the day. I, I did um, an unboxing video of the Kyocera Duraforce back in 2017, early 2017, and that was a phone that was really, like, kind of like this size, but it's really durable and rugged. Um, like, it was like probably the most rugged phone I ever reviewed on my channel. Uh, but this kind of reminds me of that. It's got the same kind of color scheme. This gray, like this looks kind of rugged on the back, doesn't it? I mean, it makes sense, right? That the original Titan phone that they made was pretty rugged and they advertised it as such. Although they never actually specifically said if it was military standard A10G or A10H certified. But they did, they did say that, yeah, it's a really rugged phone and you can use it for, you know, you can kind of uh, treat it roughly and it'll be fine. Um, they didn't specifically say that it was military certified, but... I think maybe it was close to that. Like it's, it looked pretty durable, but I'm not sure if it was actually as durable as the Kyocera Duraforce Two or the Caterpillar phones. Like those phones are actually, you know, military standard certified, and they're really rugged. But the Titan never explicitly said that. Um, but it looks it right. It looks, it looks super rugged. So even though it's not specifically military standard 810G or 810H certified, it looks like that. It looks like like a Duraforce. <laughs> it looks really. Or Caterpillar phone, right? And it looks really um, like you could be using it in the construction industry or something like that. Uh, or out on the field. Alright, so this, let's peel that away. We can put another screen protector on later. But this is what it looks like. It really is trying to be like a Blackberry Classic, right? So, yeah, the original Titan, I would say, was trying to be like a Blackberry Passport. And uh, this one is trying to be like a Blackberry Classic, uh, which came out in 2014. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've not used a BlackBerry in a long time. Like, the Key 2 was the last BlackBerry I used, and the last BlackBerry phone developed by BlackBerry themselves that I used was the Priv. That was back in 2015. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the keyboard here is the main thing about this phone, right? I mean, this space bar is really small, but that's, I guess that can't be helped because of the size. The physical keyboard, yes. I mean... I was one of those people, I mean, along with a lot of people in back in those days, where the touch screen just wasn't very good for typing. And we were all like, yeah, we got to have physical keyboards still. And that's why back in 2012, even as late as 2012, five years after the iPhone came out, there was still a lot of companies like the Motorola Droid. Remember that? The Motorola Droid? A lot of companies still making like these slider phones that have the QWERTY keyboards along with Android. Because at that time, the touch screens the touching keyboards just weren't that good or developed back then. And I think sometime after 2014, it was like 2013, maybe 2014, and people um, or companies started realizing, okay, the software caught up, the touchscreen keyboards are really good, and nobody wants to use a physical keyboard anymore. I think around 2013, 2014, that time. Then the physical keyboard phones really died off after that. Like the rest in peace, the Motorola Droid physical keyboard. I mean, yeah, the, the Motorola Droid kept going on, but they removed the keyboards, right? So you don't see much of that in the Photon Q, right? Which uh, I have for a little bit. Like, you don't see those kind of phones anymore. The QWERTY keyboards, like the slide-out QWERTY keyboards, like they basically disappeared after 2013. <laughs> so, um, I mean, the touchscreen keyboards just became way better after that, right? The software improved and everything. Um, but yeah, this is, it looks like a classic BlackBerry keyboard, doesn't it? And the shift, symbol, 
go back. This is the optical trackpad like you would get on the BlackBerry. Home, I'm guessing, alternate function and alternate symbol. Um, it's all there. On top, you get a headphone jack. Yes, that's right. Kudos to the small companies for keeping these things alive, man. <laughs> Planet Computers and FX Tech also had the headphone jack. That's something that the big companies all just threw away. So it's, it's funny the smaller companies are keeping those now. Um, keeping those alive. Uh, now that LG is basically out of the mobile business, which is kind of sad, right? LG was one of the, the last big companies to keep the headphone jack. Now it's pretty much just Sony now. And Sony's a dying company too, I mean, in terms of mobile phones, right? So Sony's like barely surviving in terms of mobile phones, and they're pretty much the last big company to keep the headphone jack after LG exited. And Samsung and um, obviously Apple, like they don't have headphone jacks anymore. So that's sad, man. I gotta say, it's, it's a sad time for the headphone jack, but I'm glad that smaller companies like Unihertz still keep me alive. Here, um, it looks to me like a volume. No, these are volume rockers, I guess. And this is uh, the power button, and this might be a specialized programming key. Is that why it's a different color? Okay, it's the programming key. Okay, interesting. This boots up to no command, it says. Uh oh. Alright, so I don't know what happened with that no command screen um, that happened when it first booted up, but I just basically reset it and uh, rebooted it and now it works. So uh, yeah, um, just to finish talking about the features, uh, USB-C port down here, right, obviously, uh, that should be there, and uh, like I said, yeah, camera's uh, back here and there's a flash, there's only one lens on this phone, I'm not expecting more than one for a budget phone. Uh, and the SIM card tray is right there on the left side. And uh, yeah, these are volume rockers, and this is the on button. So just to clarify that, they look pretty similar. Yeah, pretty much the same size, but uh, just to clarify what those do. And there's a fingerprint sensor here. So I'm going to put your finger on here, and it works. So yeah, um, and this is a programmable key. It can be pretty much anything. The screen is a 3.1 inch, 716 by 720 is the resolution here. And unfortunately, I just looked it up. This is not water resistant. It's not IP. It's not IP rated. Basically, it doesn't have any kind of dust water rating, which is really weird because the original uh, Titan, the Unihertz Titan, the original one, it was based off of had an IP67 resistance rating. So it's weird that the Titan Pocket, even though it looks so durable, right? It looks like it's a tank. Like like it looks like a yeah like a rugged phone but it's not water resistance, it's not rated like, so it's weird, right? And it even says that on the Kickstarter page, it says it's not waterproof or whatever, but like you make a phone called the Titan Pocket, it's supposed to be a miniaturized version of the Titan, which is, you know, a bigger rugged phone known for being water resistant, and then the smaller version isn't water resistant, so I don't, I don't understand that. And it looks like it should be. So yeah, I don't get why it's not rated IP67 or IP68. So anyways, um, that's one thing I found. Um, but yeah, uh, after you log in, this is the interface. It's actually very reminiscent of a vintage Blackberry type of interface, I guess. Uh, even like the bezels, right? You see these like huge bezels around the display here? I mean, even that's kind of, it just brings back that kind of retro look. <laughs> so yeah, on a web page, um, I can type like this and using the keyboard is what you would expect. It's pretty good. Um, those of you who have used a BlackBerry Classic before will feel right at home using this keyboard. Um, and just like on the Blackberries, you can scroll using the keyboard as well. So that's pretty good as well. Right? You don't have to touch the screen or block the screen anyway. And that would actually be, since the screen is so small, right? you definitely don't want to block the screen with your fingers. Um, it also prevents the screen from getting dirty too when you're doing this. So it's a very useful feature that BlackBerry originally had on their uh, phones and now. The Unihertz Titan Pocket continues that. So yeah, let's try Gadget. There, so yeah, most websites, I mean, they look fairly cramped considering the screen is only 3.1 inches, um, but it's still, you know, readable and stuff like that. I mean, you are reading on a display that's about the same size as what you get on a smartphone 2011, 10 years ago. Um, but yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, reading web pages and stuff is cool. Uh, I, what I would use this phone for, right, is texting people a lot because that's what the physical keyboard is meant for, right? Doing stuff like that. So uh, you can text a friend. Um, 
something like this. Um, and let's see what my speed is typing just off the bat. Oops. Don't want autocorrect on that. Uh, all right. <laughs> yep. So yeah, I would use this for texting and stuff like that. I'm sure I'll get used to it. You know, this is my kind of first time really using a physical keyboard in a long time. But um, I guess uh, you get muscle memory after using a physical keyboard stuff like that, right? So other than that, this is pretty like it looks fairly similar to BlackBerry OS, right? I think that's what they were going for. This Android skin. Um, let's do YouTube, I guess, when we're watching videos on this. I'm not expect this speaker is a mono speaker. I'm not expecting it to be any good or anything. Um, actually, what was I searching for? Yeah, Tokyo Story. This really great, um, really great movie by yes Yasujiro Ozu back in 1953, I believe. I was planning to watch this one, right? Watch the trailer. I don't know if it flips or not. It doesn't orient, right? I guess it doesn't make too much sense to orient it because, you know, this is a square display, so it doesn't make much sense to rotate it. You just might as well just watch it like this. It's a letterboxing because of the... Interesting. Yeah, I mean, originally, yeah, originally the aspect ratio was in 4.3 anyways. Let's go to a 16.9 autumn afternoon. Okay, let's look at a video that should be more modern than something from the 60s or from the 50s rather okay so this is like a 16.9 video you can't put much of it okay so that's how loud the uh, this is how loud the speakers will go So yeah, if you put your speakers all the way up, this is how loud it gets from the model. So not too bad considering the size of the device. Okay, that's about how much I can play. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah, it's not bad. I mean, considering the size of the device and the price of the device, it's a mono speaker. I mean, it's not great, but it's, I mean, considering it's three hundred dollar device by a small known brand, right? That's about as good as it, what you would expect. Um, that's pretty much it uh, for the Titan Pocket. So, yeah, um, I mean, the typing and the features like that, if you're a fan of the BlackBerry Classic back in the day, then you'd probably like this device, right? If you like the BlackBerry Passport, then you'd probably go for the original Titan. So, yeah, um, of course, like the thing I mentioned, the thing I'm kind of disappointed about is there's no water-resistant rating on it. I don't know why. I mean, the original Titan was water-resistant. Why isn't this one rated? Not sure, especially since it's the the miniature version of it. It looks rugged, right? It says it's drop proof, right? If it's drop proof, then why isn't it water resistant? <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so, anyways, guys, that is the Unihertz Titan Pocket. And uh, for size comparison, this is a small device, but for size comparison, this is the Unihertz Jelly Two. You can see just how tiny this one is. Jelly 2 is just like very, very tiny. It's miniature. <laughs> but actually has a bigger display, as a 4 inch display. It's a bigger display than the Titan, but it's not a square aspect ratio. Um, but it is a much smaller device. It doesn't have the keyboard, obviously. Uh, and then I think the iPhone 12 mini is probably about a little bit taller than it. So you can see the comparison with the iPhone 12 mini. Oh, somehow I enabled this. It's weird. Okay. So this red button here, which is like programmable, um, by default, it enables a flashlight, it looks like. So, <laughs> it's not too bad. Okay, I did not know that. Enables a flashlight. Uh, I guess if you want to see the camera, it's not great, but uh, yeah. Okay, you know, I'm so used to having multiple lenses on my camera phones now. It's just one regular lens that's not that good. And I wonder, you can also set it to take a picture here whoops okay not expecting that to be very good um, all right so yeah <laughs> don't expect really good quality from that 
Uh, it's, it's just, I mean, the best camera is always the one that you have with you. So I'm glad that it's there. But don't expect to have like really good picture quality or anything. This shouldn't be your main phone. I mean, you can use it as a secondary phone, but if it's going to be your main phone, then um, yeah, either you don't care about taking pictures and this can be your main phone, which is fine. Uh, or if you do care about taking pictures, then this shouldn't be your main phone. Um, one other thing I want to show is that this has this intelligent assistant, which has all these different settings to help you use your Titan Pocket. So it has like network manager here. By the way, this is a back button. And this button here is actually, I was wrong, it's not like a home button. It's actually uh, this app switcher button here. So that's what this button is for. And uh, yeah, this one is for going back, of course. Um, has an app locker. Uh, keyboard shortcuts right there so you can long press any of these keywords something that Blackberry also had remember you can have keyboard shortcuts so you can assign any of these keys um, to launch an app or something like that LED notification and customize that scroll assistant this is where you can customize like basically how you would custom that's how I enabled the ability to scroll via the keyboard is with this scroll assistant so that's their mini mode where uh, if you have third-party apps that have display problems, you can enable mini mode to have it fit more to this aspect ratio because this is not a non-standard aspect ratio, right? It's basically the old school BlackBerry aspect ratio, which is more like a square. Most apps these days are not meant for that aspect ratio. So I guess that's a mode you can try. Rotation control, uh, this will actually lock certain apps in certain rotation modes because they look better. Like you would never want to use it. most of these apps, I think. Uh, on this phone, you probably never need, need to use landscape for any reason, right? Since it's a square uh, aspect ratio, like landscape is probably unnecessary for any app. So that's why you can kind of lock it down if it tries to rotate. Uh, shortcut settings, that's where you can customize that um, red button right here and other buttons, symbol and function as well, you can customize. Uh, spacebar key, you can also customize that for incoming calls or taking pictures. Uh, so yeah, I can double click it to take a picture, I can enable that, flip to mute, that's another setting, scan, right, that's for QR code, uh, and then you got more settings here. So yeah, there's uh, settings for uh, customizing what you can do with this phone, so that's pretty cool. Then if you want to see the BlackBerry Key 2, which is the last BlackBerry device that was released back in 2018, you can see the size of the BlackBerry Key 2 right there. And I think I do have another small phone, yes. I do have the Galaxy Z Flip 3, which I just got fairly recently. You can see the size of that compared to here. This is the folded, right, mode of that. And it's actually just slightly even smaller uh, lengthwise than the Jelly 2. This is impressive. Obviously, it's a bigger of a device, though, right? You can fold into a much bigger device. But in the uh, folded mode here, the clamshell mode, yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty portable still, and then the iPhone 12 mini right here, which is still a pretty small portable phone as well. So, right, that's it. Um, yeah, the iPhone 12 mini is like only slightly taller than the Titan Pocket. But otherwise, uh, yeah, this is the Titan Pocket. Um, overall, I think this is a pretty cool phone. I mean, those of you who enjoy the BlackBerry Classic, enjoy physical keyboards, obviously will love this device since BlackBerry does not make any more phones. And um, the other kind of physical keyboard phones we see on the market are all from small companies like FX Tech and, and Planet Computers, which are coming out with their Astro Slide soon. Uh, but those are very, very different devices from a, a BlackBerry style phone, right? So Unihertz is pretty much the only company still making this traditional BlackBerry style candy bar physical keyboard phone so if that's what you're looking for then this is pretty much the one to get right uh, if you want something bigger then get the original Titan uh, although I think I've heard a lot of people don't like the original Titan either because I mean, they just don't feel it's the same as the Blackberry and a lot of people still prefer their Blackberry Key 2's and I think the Blackberry Key 2 keyboard is still really good you know what what I think um, if I were to like you know work at any one of these companies or at BlackBerry or something like that, I would try to make the Priv again. Like the Priv, I think, was a device that was ahead of the time. That there was like a slider, it was a vertical slider phone. It's still the very last vertical slider phone that I saw on the market um, that reveals a physical keyboard, right? It just didn't do well for the time because uh, it had a bunch of issues and stuff. But once they get the software straightened out and you know the hardware improved, I think people would actually use that. Like it was actually a very cool device. 
and if they came out with another vertical slider, like, I'd probably get that. So I would probably make like a new version of the Priv if I had the chance. Um, but yeah, the Key 2 is, yeah, a really good keyboard, and compared to the Titan, yeah, I mean, I think they're fairly similar, it's just, maybe this one's a little bit more clicky. It's a little bit more clicky than this one. This one maybe got, it's not as tactile. You don't feel it, you don't feel the, the feedback as much as this one. And this one's the keys are also a little bit more square. These ones have that um, more trapezoid look, I guess. It's not as square. But anyways, they're, they're both good keyboards. Um, obviously, the Key 2 has a more wider, comfortable keyboard because it's bigger. But this is the size of the Classic, so I haven't used a BlackBerry Classic, so maybe those of you who have a Classic who have this phone can tell me better about that. But, I mean, to me, this seems fine for, for what it's trying to be. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it has all the major features and everything. Uh, the one thing is with the water resist resistance, I really would have preferred if this had dust water resistance. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't, because it looks like it should, but yeah. I'm not sure why. That's that's really the one thing I was kind of really disappointed about this phone. But for 300 bucks, yeah, uh, it's not bad. I mean, those of you who like physical keyboard phones really don't have any other choice, right? <laughs> you either stick with your BlackBerry Key 2 or you get this one. Uh, I mean, what other choice do you have if you want a physical keyboard phone of this size? <laughs> um, yeah, of this form factor. So, that's it, guys. Unihertz Titan Pocket. Again. The latest device from that uh, it seems like Chinese companies are kind of picking up the slack where Western companies kind of just gave up. Um, yep, looks like that's what's happening these days. But there are like UK startups, right? Like Planet Computers and FX Tech, which I give props to. Those are those guys are from the UK. Uh, but otherwise, like Kickstarter projects by these small Chinese companies are also pretty cool as well. All right, so some other things I neglected to show you guys from this phone is uh, when you swipe down from the top here, it's not the uh, typical uh, Android kind of menu here. You have some extra options here, and you can also do a scroll assistant and keyboard backlight. You can activate those options from there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, this keyboard is backlit. So yeah, once you press this, um, you see this keyboard will light up. So that's pretty cool. Pressing the symbol function will bring up the list of special characters and you can cycle through them, right? Different special characters there. And uh, alternate and function will activate different alternate keys, of course. Uh, and as I said, you can map these keys to whatever you want. Um, and uh, pressing this button here, actually just quickly pressing this button in the middle here will bring you back home. So this, this is the home button. I thought I originally thought this was, but this is the home button. It'll bring you back home by short press. If you long press it, it will actually bring up the assistant. So you hold it this for a bit, and then the Google Assistant will come up. So that's what this one in the middle does. And uh, yeah, and then the stereo speakers on the back here. I originally thought that this was a mono speaker, but this is actually stereo speakers. So that's why it sounded louder than I expected. So yeah, uh, those are some extra things I found out about this device. Also, the battery life is pretty damn good. Uh, so right now, I've been using it fairly lightly, still at 55%. I've not charged it in over a day. So this device actually has lasted longer than a day, and it still has 55%. So that's pretty darn good. Um, so yeah, that's that's been my experience with this device so far. Pretty good battery life and some extra features I uh, neglected to show. That's it, guys. Unihertz Titan Pocket. Let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.